Okay. Hey, of course. Awesome. Okay. Well, we're just going to go right into it. Um, you know, we've done a lot of topics. Hi, <laughs> I'm seeing people come in. We've done a lot of topics um, surrounding overcoming obstacles, overcoming hardships, learning how to speak to yourself in a certain way when you're going through, you know, anxiety style situations, whether it's in sport or life. And I know your perspective is so different, especially because, you know, you're, it's more recent as well. Like you've got so many stories yeah. and you're still working through a lot of things and coming out on the positive side of it. So I'm excited to hear you chat today and yeah, I'll let you take it away on the topic and introduce it and everything, but Brea Larson. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I, I think changing perspective for me is really what got me excited to swim in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so I swam a little bit of summer league growing up and dabbled in some high school swimming, but I didn't start swimming club until I was 17. So my senior year, um, really, really late in the game. And I remember my first day on deck, my coach, Brad Herring asked me, he said, all right, do you want to be an Olympian? Oh, do you want to be an Olympian? And I thought back to when I was like five or six years old and I was like, well, I was going to be an Olympic gymnast or an, an Olympic gymnast. Um, but it turns out when you're six feet tall and 12 years old, it doesn't really happen. Um, <laughs> no, gymnasts aren't you know, six feet tall. <laughs> I love it. You know, like the years and years of cartwheels in the front yard just wasn't going to cut it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So <laughs> sticks. And I just kind of rolled my eyes at him. I'm like, okay, sure. And he said, no, think about it. You know, every time you dive into the water, it has to be the perfect angle, perfect technique. Every time you do a flip turn, you have to have the perfect landing. Mm -hmm. You know, and he just tried using different jargon to show me that swimming isn't just staring at the bottom of the pool the entire time. It's, it's a beautiful dance routine. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to be so coordinated and think of every single mo mo movement in your body. And it became so much more interesting to go through practices and actually – listen to the drills and what they do and and I just always thought of it as a dance routine you know I like I loved dancing yeah. growing up never actually did um you know organized dancing just like dancing in my living room and whatnot um but That's finally cool. you know, it kind of became a really cool dance routine so just then changing my perspective of how you can make your sport more interesting um started right there and then yeah. the the next kind of thing I thought of was uh my oatmeal story so I remember going into Texas A&M, um, those girls had a good 10 years experience on me, right? Yeah. And just and, to recap, and, you went there for college. Yeah. You went Texas A&M. Yeah, yes, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I had going into college, I had one year of club experience and everyone else probably had 10 or 12 years of club experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so needless to say, I drowned a lot. <laughs> um, they were just swimming circles around me and it was really hard. You know, I came in here and and no one, no one ever said anything. They're very welcoming and, and very, very sweet about it. Um, but you know, it, there was an attitude of like, why, why did we take on this girl when she's only been swimming for a year? It doesn't make any sense. And you know, she's, she's not making the intervals in practice. She's, she's just not doing very well. Mm -hmm. Um, and when it came to the, the meets and I could kind of show I could race well, it, it got better, but it got really difficult through times. Um, especially when you started adding, um, all the extra training and the extra classes in school. And I, I remember I sat down for breakfast and I had a bowl of oatmeal and I looked at the spoon and all of a sudden it looked like it was 70 pounds, you know, and, and everything was very dramatic in my head. I was like, how am I going to get this spoon of oatmeal from the bowl to my mouth without just dying? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, and, and like, you're so tired that your gag reflex is going crazy. <laughs> you're like, I can't even follow my food. Um, and so I remember I went back home uh, to the dorm room and I tried to sleep and I started twitching and so I couldn't sleep. And so I texted my mom this really sad long message that just explained how today she had seven daughters and tomorrow she would have six because I was going to die. Oh, I love it. <laughs> you know, just, yeah. just really, really, really dramatic. And yeah. I just hit my point where I, I honestly did not know if I was going to make it. Mm -hmm. And she sent me this really simple text message that said, Bria, this is what it feels like to be a champion. And it just hit me. You know, I, I just started thinking of, of all the greats in the world at whatever occupation they do, 
they go to bed feeling mm -hmm. exhausted. Mm -hmm. They go to bed wondering, you know, how are they going to get better the next day? Mm -hmm. And it just, it, I went from thinking, oh, poor me, how am I going to do this to, I want to go out there and rock this and do the best I can and, and try and feel this tired every single day. Yeah. Because if I feel this tired, I feel like I can't give any more then I obviously did my best mm -hmm. and I'll get stronger for it. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. that really put me through a lot of things. Yeah. Um, and then I, I read through a, a quote from Arnold Schwarzenegger and I wrote it down. I love this quote. Um, <laughs> Gotta love it. <laughs> um, said, this pain that you hold is yours. There's not a single pain quite like it. Nobody else on, hold on, nobody else on God's green earth can feel this pain or have the indescribable feeling of pride you will have when you overcome it. This pain is not your curse. This pain is your privilege. Mm, that's and really that beautiful. Me. Yeah. And so, yeah, I really like that because I think that there's, you know, there's a lot of questions around shifting perspective, right? There's a lot of questions like, how do you do it? What does that even mean? Or, you know, how's that different mm -hmm. than changing your language? And how's that different than, you know, um, faking it? Right. Like there's there's different ways that we can interpret that term or that, you know, entire mm -hmm. um, sentence or phrase. And just to recap, you know, you've been at the highest level of Olympic swimming and you can tell everybody your mm -hmm. years and your event and everything and, and the Olympics if you want. If it doesn't you know, it doesn't define you, but you know that it's really cool to see you start talking about it when you were a child versus that shift in perspective yeah. as you got better. So tell me a little bit more about, first of all, what your definition is with shifting perspective in general. Like when you, when someone says, Oh, Bria, just change your perspective. If someone were to say that to you or to anyone, an athlete, a parent, a friend, whatever, what would you what would you say is that definition? Like, what's your definition of that? How do you interpret that? I think just switching, almost switching the narrative mm -hmm. um, and creating, creating a, a conversation in your head um, with, with yourself mm -hmm. of how to make it a positive experience. Mm -hmm. And I, I know it gets really difficult sometimes because um, I know I get into this cycle sometimes where the negative narrative almost feels more comfortable to stay in. Yes. Right? Why? Why is that? Um, I, I, you know, I think I always try and, and tell my athletes that they have to be their own best friend. It's mm -hmm. really difficult. So if I go up to you, Caroline, and, and I say like, wow, you know, you, you were really bad in practice today. You know, like your, your underwaters were terrible. You kept looking like you were complaining. I just don't think you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. That would make me a terrible friend, mm -hmm. a terrible friend. Mm -hmm. And I would never, ever say that to anyone mm -hmm. or even think that of anyone else, mm -hmm. you know? But for some reason, it's so easy to think and say that to yourself. It's true, yeah. And so it's, it's just trying to continuously work on becoming a better friend to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, That's you know, cool. And, and if, you, if you wouldn't say it to your friend, don't say it to yourself. Right. Like, why would you be that terrible? Because you should be your own, your own best mm -hmm. friend. Mm -hmm. You're the one person in the entire world that knows you the best. And it just takes reflection and thought. And I, I think it's, it's really difficult sometimes to try and get into that mindset because your brain is a muscle just like anything else, right? Mm -hmm. But no one can be there to keep you accountable for working on yourself, for working mm -hmm. on your head, for working on the positive communication. Yeah. I can tell you, I can, I can tell my mom, everyone that, yeah. oh, yeah, I've been working on it. It's fine. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, that's it, a great really point. Comfortable. Yeah. And that's a great point. Mm -hmm. So something that we've spoken about on a previous Q and A and something, you know, to be totally honest that I work on all the time, Rebecca works on all the time, like in general, just running a business is feedback and, and how you receive it. And mm -hmm. it's interesting, right? Because as an athlete, you're going to get feedback, you're going to get the dirty, you're going to get the good, you're going to get the, you know, the rough, the everything. And the more that you start to shift your perspective and understand that that feedback is helping you and that you can interpret it how you want, the better you're going to get. Right. So let's say you're given a piece of feedback by your coach or by yourself that is negative or something is not, you know, you're not being your best friend, your own best friend. You're, you're hearing this in a different way. How do you then take that and shift that perspective in that languaging in your mind. So for example, 
you, if I told you right now, that was a very poor effort in your hundred brush stroke or that that right. was a poor effort. You could hear one of two things. You could hear this person that just told me this is mean. I'm pissed. <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> do it. Like who are they to say that to me? You know? And I, it wasn't that bad. That was not a poor effort. Right. So you can put yourself on the defense and blame the situation or you can receive that and then choose to see what their intention was. Like, what's their intention in that? Even if you right. don't agree with it, right? Like, you can choose to shift that and be like, okay, so what I'm hearing is this. <laughs> like, the, right. the, their perception of my effort was this. What's my perception? So it's interesting, right? So talk a little yes. bit more about that whole process of, like, when you receive that information, how you then go through the process of shifting it. And maybe explain a little bit about a time that you didn't do that and you didn't shift a perspective and it blew up in your face, so to speak, you know, in a way that became a detriment to your performance. Mm -hmm. I've got actually a really good story with that. Um, well, first I think it, it takes practice. Mm -hmm. All, all of the, the mental games that we play with ourselves take practice. And so if you notice, this is a really hard thing to admit. Um, but you know, if you notice that, if everybody has a problem with you, it might not be them. It might be you and, and how you're mm -hmm. perceiving things. Not that you're doing something wrong, but how you're perceiving things. Um, and I think some of that, if, if you want to change the perspective of how you're receiving input from your coaches, mm -hmm. sometimes it really is going to take the, the courage to go up to them and tell them how mm -hmm. you're perceiving things. And, and hopefully, you know, that coach is mature enough to – realize how you're taking it and if they need to change their tone because you know there's different kinds of coaches there's the kind of coaches that that hold the stick and say swim faster mm -hmm. or the kind of coaches that hold the carrot and say swim faster mm -hmm. you yeah. know like there's different kinds of coaching and neither is is wrong or right it just kind of depends on how the swimmers perceive it mm -hmm. and so you need to figure out what kind of swimmer you are if if you do well with the coaches yelling at you and and you know like screaming at you to do it faster some really thrive on that mm -hmm. um versus others who might be more sensitive and just see it as constant insults. Um, and so it's, it's just trying to realize how you're seeing it. So if you mm -hmm. see your coach or your parent or your friend as they're always being mean to you, I, I don't think a lot of the time the, the human is trying to put down the others. Like sometimes it happens, unfortunately, but you have to take a step back, like you said, and kind of see everything and how you're perceiving it and the, and the perspective in general. And yeah. have an, try and have an open communication without getting too emotional. So if right. you go up to your coach or your parent mm -hmm. and you start, um, you know, chastising them for being this way, then they're going to go on the defense again. So it, it's going to take a lot of just practice and trying to be calm and saying, hey, when you're giving me this kind of feedback, like this is how I'm taking it. And uh, you know, we need to work together. We need to work together to mm -hmm. try and reach this goal that we have as a team, as a, a coach athlete relationship, um, you know, just mm -hmm. trying to make sure that everyone is on the same page and it, it takes both parties, um, but it has to start with you. Yeah. You have to be the one to look at it and say, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? And with the, with the um, feedback that seems negative, like you didn't give enough effort I would really prod the athletes to ask, well, what can I tell me how I can change that? Mm -hmm. What was it about the race? Mm -hmm. did, did I just die in the back half? Because this was my effort in the beginning or naturally you need to say like, was that my best effort? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, did I give? Up? Why did I give up? Mm -hmm. Am I having a hard time in school? Am I having a hard time in my personal life in general? Is that affecting my swimming? Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it, there's so many, there's so many aspects to each individual's life that can override other things. Mm -hmm. And so I know a lot of time coaches will want to say, um, you know, you got to leave home at home. And when you're at swim, you're at swim. Yeah. Sometimes it's difficult. I think especially going through high school, you know, like there's so many things going on in everyone's personal life. Right. Um, it's just going to take the mental practice in trying to change your perspective in what swimming is about for you. That's a great point. And I think you touched on a big piece of this, which is communication. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I know me, for example, I went through a phase where I literally thought every piece of external feedback that was given to me 
was a, you know, meant something was wrong with me. It was like a horrible thing. And I remember yeah. I went through that. I think I went through that more in high school. And then as I got into college, I understood, you know, a little bit better. Of course, you go through your roller coasters of they hate me or they don't believe in me, you know, the whole thing. But I think it's exactly right. It's the communication and the power of question asking. And so asking questions, like you said, what can I do better? But also asking yourself questions, like you said. Yeah. And was I doing enough there? Like, was that enough? Or did I actually, what was going on? Like, wh where was my head? Where was my brain? What was actually happening in that moment? And yeah, I mean, do you feel that that question asking is important in a way that comes from a place of understanding versus like, interrogating and attacking or put, being put on the defense? Because I know that's a very normal feeling as you're growing. And as people are teenagers, you know, we have a lot of parents watching right now, and they're teenagers, someone just commented, you know, my teenager felt that they couldn't do it, or, or they don't feel that they have the ability to, you know, continue to move forward. And I think a lot of that is because we take feedback, whether it's from the environment we're in, the scores on the scoreboard, uh, coach feedback, parent feedback, peer feedback, whatever it is, as negative, as inherently, I'm not yeah. enough, right? Like that feeling of I'm not enough. Have you ever had a mm -hmm. moment like that specifically where you literally thought, I am not, I'm actually not enough. <laughs> Yeah. I'm actually uh, like, uh, everyone's telling me this. I'm telling me this, like, I'm done. I'm not enough. I don't have it in me. Uh, definitely in 2016. Um, so in 2012, uh, you know, I, that was my third year just swimming year round swim. Mm -hmm. um, I gave it everything I had and I won Olympic trials in the hundred breaststroke and went on to get a gold and medley relay. And it was an incredible experience and then two more years of college went by. It was awesome. It was awesome. And then I went pro in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and so in 2016 going in, I felt like I have to win Olympic trials. Mm -hmm. You know, like I have to defend my, my title. Mm -hmm. um, and it became so much pressure. And I had had so much just mess going on in my personal life mm -hmm. that it just kind of overwhelmed it. But I remember thinking, you know, I, I just spent an extra two years training past my college eligibility. So if I don't win Olympic trials and go, I just wasted two years of my life. I just wasted all that, like all this effort, all, all the yeah. money I put into massage and like perfect nutrition and yeah. all the weekends I gave up to make sure I got extra sleep. You know, I just, I did, I had like 15 alarms on my phone. Like you need to eat breakfast by this yeah. time. You need to take a nap by this time. You need to eat lunch by this time. Just like mm -hmm. all day. It was so regimented mm -hmm. all the time. Um, and you know, I, I needed, I needed it. Mm -hmm. I felt like I needed it. And when it came around for some reason, I just didn't have a spark in my races and it was probably the worst meet of my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in my head, I honestly was like, all right, I'm going to make the, the 2016 Olympics and both 100, 200 breaststroke and make the relay and, and try and get golds in all three. And, you know, then I'll, I'll have this and this and this, and my mm -hmm. life will be perfect and everything will be great. Mm -hmm. And it'll just be dandy. And the, the complete opposite happened. You know, and, and not just to mention the, the, the pride of, of feeling like you made your, your, your second Olympics or even your first, um, but realizing that the, the contract money that you could have received is gone as well. Yeah. So, you know, not only did I, did I feel like I missed out on my, my personal dream, mm -hmm. but also my financial um, mm -hmm. safety net, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it was, it was so hard because you know, you had all the, all the family members back at home that like knew you were going to make it. And so not only did you feel like you were letting yourself down mm -hmm. and your coach down and your team down, but your entire, um, like childhood network, you know, yeah. and just yeah. having that absolute, just almost like spiritual crushing of just realizing that you weren't good enough to make it. Mm -hmm. What does that make you? What, and, and you know what's really great is Annie Chandler, um, now Annie Grievers, I love her. wrote yeah. an incredible article yeah. um, when, when Matt Grievers missed his 16 Olympics mm -hmm. and how it, it was interesting. Matt said to Annie, you know, like, 
I want to go do autographs, but will they even want my autograph? Mm. Like, will they even want it? And, and I looked at him and I was like, why would they mm -hmm. not? Like, you're the man. I have chills Olympian. right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you're like, yeah. You're the man at the Olympian that everyone loves to mm -hmm. see, that you do flexing pictures with all the little kids. Mm -hmm. like, like, the crowd loves you. Like, you are you. Like, the, the efforts and the results of your swimming – does not determine who you are. Mm -hmm. You're, you're still like the, the sweetheart of America for men's swimming, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. you are still Mac Reavers. Mm -hmm. And, and reading that, I realized it's just like, well, if I think that about him going back to being your own best friend, you know, if I were talking to Matt saying like, what are you talking about? Like, you're a phenomenal person, a phenomenal athlete. They all love you just because you had a bad race at the, at the worst time doesn't make you any less of a person or an athlete. Yeah. I was like, okay, I, I need to think about that for myself. You know, think of, of all the little girls that, that I've talked to or mentored and all the clinics that I've, I've mm -hmm. kind of helped kids mm -hmm. and trying to inspire them to just be better people, be better friends, be better athletes and just have fun. Mm -hmm. That's still there. Yeah. You know, like the work I've done outside of the water is still there. Mm -hmm. And I still know that I, I still hold the same values. I still hold the same ideas and hopes and dreams. And just because I got up on the blocks and had a bad minute and seven seconds does not determine my worth in mm -hmm. any capacity. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to realize that. And I think everyone can, should allow themselves to feel the emotions mm -hmm. But um, Jack Roach, who is... He was just on. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, He's so the best. Nervous. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, but he, he spoke to me. Um, mm -hmm. We were in, in Russia at a World Cup. Mm -hmm. And I was having a really hard time. And he was like, you know, Bria, when you're behind the blocks ready to race, that is the most important thing in the world. Nothing else matters. It doesn't matter if you're mad at your boyfriend or your girlfriend or, you know, you've got a bad grade, you're having a fight with your grade. It doesn't matter. You're in front of the blocks. That is the most important thing in the world. That is the only thing that matters. You swim your race, and when you touch the wall, it's done. Yeah. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. You know, you give yourself, give yourself five seconds, ten minutes, whatever you need to feel, especially if it's happy, feel the happy. Happy is always welcome, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but if it's negative – you can go to your coach, find the feedback, what you need to change, mm -hmm. but that's it. It's just that's a race. You're really, just yeah. And so that right there is a really big example of somebody that was able to assist you in shifting your perspective in that moment. And Jack has done that's this for me. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times as well. Like I could count on like 10 million hands of, that I don't have, but yeah. it's, it, it's true. And I think that, going back to that, how do we take that on ourselves, right? So, you know, there's something interesting as well, where somebody says to you, nothing else matters, you know, you, you're behind the blocks, or, you know, nothing else matters, blah, blah, blah. We can, again, take that as like, well, more things in life are important than just swimming, right? So we, we have the, we can do the reverse, right? Like we can shift good into right. bad talk a little bit about that because I know for a fact that that's something that I get a lot of questions about just just being a mentor myself with rise and with my friendships and everything is what about self-sabotage is addicting almost I think it like it, it definitely taking it and being and like uh-uh uh-uh right like so that defensive self-sabotage moment and I think mm -hmm. that do you, I feel that that's something that's, it's almost a self-fulfilling prophecy or a way of being, wanting reassurance that you're okay. Talk a little bit about, about that exact concept. So when you're given feedback or good positive things that we then turn into, well, no, -uh, did you see that terrible third turn? Right. When, so what's a better way to deliver mm -hmm. that? Like instead of sabotaging something, What's a better mm -hmm. way to deliver and to understand that you can still want to be better, even if you're given good feedback, you can still want to be better. I, you know, I think we can uh, use my, my college coach, Steve Bowman, for example. Um, I think I've had, I've gotten feedback from him every single race I ever slam mm -hmm. on, on his team. Mm -hmm. And I, I want to say there might've been just one race 
that he didn't have feedback, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I think on, under, under his program, I think I broke maybe nine American records <laughs> and after each Not one, a big deal. It was my own time just going like a 10th faster or a hundredth faster. Um, but you know, it's just like, I would swim it and I'm like, Steve, that was awesome. He goes, yeah, that was good. But a, B, C, D. And, and, and that, and that was normal, it was normal, mm, you know, but mm -hmm. and just, just to get that, that was good. I was like, yeah, it was good. Yes. And, and it was never, he did, he does such an incredible job at delivering it that it's never a negative thing. If he tells you things you need to work on, mm -hmm. you need to change it. Not something you did wrong, just something you need to work on. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and I think maybe even, I, I hope some like coaches see this, um, changing your delivery and what you tell your swimmers can make a world of difference. Yeah. And maybe that's something that, that swimmers can also communicate to their coaches, you know, saying like, it, cause there, there definitely are swimmers that, um, or even athletes in general that are slacking, don't give their best, you mm -hmm. know, but for those who can have that trust with their coach, knowing that I did my best. Um, but you know, maybe you are breathing off your walls or mm -hmm. you aren't holding a tight streamline well, like, let me know, mm. you know, before you start yelling at me or giving me things I'm doing wrong, tell me things I need to correct. Yeah. So I think just, so coaches changing their, that's a big uh, shift. Yeah. Is a big shift. And so do it with yourself, you know, like change the delivery to yourself in your head. Yeah. You know, like I can give an example of, um, I hate holding my breath. I'm, I'm the biggest <laughs> like, We have this set. No, really. We have, the, it's so embarrassing. We have this set. Um, so I, I train with high school kids and I love it. It's so much fun. But we have this set where we have to stick our head in the water and hold it for 10 seconds and then swim on, swim at 25 underwater. And it doesn't seem that bad, but then we go for 20 seconds and 30 seconds. I think I've done 20 seconds one time. I, I freak out every time. And you know, there's kids that are 13, 14 that can hold their breath for 30 seconds and then push underwater and do a 50 underwater. And I can't even sit there for 30 seconds to relax. I can't, I, I'm mm. sorry. At this time, I have a yeah. lot of time with it. Yeah. You know, and, and so yeah, there you go. When See, I, you like, caught yourself even there and that's, yeah. that's key, right? It's learning how to mm -hmm. communicate to yourself first before you receive it from others as well. So, and that's something I constantly work on. So when I hear we're doing that set right away in my head, I'm like, well, I'm, I'm done. I'm over. Uh -huh. I can't do uh -huh. it. I'm going to drown. Yeah. I'm, I could literally die today. <laughs> You know, I, I, get really, yeah. I get really dramatic when, when holding breath comes into play. Um, every, but every once in a while I can, I can, it's hard, you know, it's, it's brain power working on that muscle in your head. That's like, okay, today is an opportunity to get mm -hmm. better. It's an opportunity. My coach knows that I'm going to try my best. So on this set, I'm going to take it one at a time mm -hmm. and see, I will, I will make every 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. I will make the 20 second hold because I know I've done it before and I will try my best truly I will try my best to make it and it's going to be awesome when I make it. Yeah. And it's really, it's really difficult. You know, it's yeah. not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of practice, but that yeah. can just go for everything. Um, just trying to make sure yeah. that you're just changing the narrative in your head. That's changing the perspective. Right. You can perceive it as this is an opportunity for me to drown today. Yeah. I hate swimming. Yeah. Or, you know, this is an opportunity for me to work on it and become even better. Yeah. Wow, that's such a good point. So, and, and, you know, just to recap kind of in a series, it's like you, you receive information, you can choose to take it one way or the other. And then, you know, it's, it's really important to be able to, when you shift that, to shift the languaging first. I think when we shift languaging first, even if it feels fake or like we're doing it because we, we're supposed to, because we're supposed to shift our perspective, our brains, you know, I mean, it's science. <laughs> Once we continue yeah. to tell ourselves something in a way that is more constructive and growth mindset versus like I'm fixing on this certain term or this certain feeling, it becomes a habit. Like the more that you practice that, the more that you do that, the more that you encourage yeah. that growth. And I really like how you spoke about changing the delivery. And maybe we can wrap up on this topic because I think changing the delivery, you know, that's never a bad thing. I don't think there's one human on the planet that delivers everything perfectly all the time. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a subject that, what do you say? 
Except Jack Roach. Yes, I know. He's so great. And <laughs> it's true. Doing. It's it's a subject that's so important. And I think that I'm noticing too, at, we're coaches, right? Like we're mentors. That's being a coach. We receive feedback all the time and we learn how to take it. I also think that it's important to understand that how we deliver the message is the most crucial way of doing things. And not only that, it doesn't mean that it's wrong or that you've done something wrong. And more importantly than anything, it doesn't mean that you're not still tough on somebody. Being, I think that's where, you know, from my perception, I've spoken to some peers of mine that are coaches in the swimming world or soccer, or volleyball or whatever it may be. And the, the number one thing is how do I become more like understanding and in a place of understanding and communicate more effectively and deliver something, but also be hard on, you know, not hard, but be, be a tough coach at times. Like I want to be tough. I'm not just going to be like, whatever, you're good. <laughs> you know? So there is yes. a, a discrepancy, right? Like sometimes coaches are a little mm -hmm. bit maybe perhaps nervous to deliver a message too nicely if they're trying to get a point across that is something that's a bit more serious. Um, do you have any final closing words on that just about communicating, but still holding a standard of excellence in a way? Mm -hmm. I think that I feel that knowing there, I feel like you might need to even coach each individual athlete differently. Mm -hmm. You know, it, looking at it as like a family unit, um, you know, I, I have, I have six siblings mm -hmm. and my mom treats each of us differently mm -hmm. depending on how we're going to receive it. And so that does come a lot. If, let's say you have 70 kids that you're coaching. Yeah. It, it, you know, you can't quite do that. Um, yeah. but I think just trying to create a, a professional and mature way of telling them, like I've seen, um, like Terry McKeever coach. Mm -hmm. And when, when she's been kind of the coach over the women's, um, she lets us know how she feels mm -hmm. and she does a very like straightforward job. And, you know, I think it kind of depends on each person. I really yeah. do. Yeah. That's um, a great point. Just trying, to make sure, just trying to make sure that your message is received in a constructive way mm -hmm. and not received um, just in a, in a, a personal attacking way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and body language it, it, has a lot to do with it. Yeah. And the yeah. athletes definitely know to work on that yeah uh, for those who take everything personally, and it's it's a it's a personality trait in general that some will have versus others um yeah. but really it, it all like perspective in general it has to you have to want to change it mm -hmm. caroline can't change it Bria can't change it coach can't change it mom can't you have to want to if you want to be a positive person if you want to change it to make to help you succeed mm. in in more aspects in life not even just swimming but everything you have to take the steps to work on it mm -hmm. you know like right like I, I think a big thing that the the rise mentors do is is help athletes realize what their red flag thoughts are yeah you know like trying to decide what your your internal communication is with yourself and mm -hmm. changing how you see that and changing how you um receive information from others and input makes makes the difference yeah and, and I think changing your perspective on that in general is the biggest game changer of all. And it can yeah. help you just take in everything in such a more positive light that can help you succeed. And once you want to do it, once you make the personal choice to do it, that is when you can start improving. I like that you just ended on that because personal choice, I think, is so important. I'll never forget when my dad finally was just like, you know, you have to want to change or you have to want to blah, blah, blah. I, for some reason, I didn't resonate with that. I don't know why. And then he was like, you have to, it's a choice is what he said. And I was like, oh, like once I understood that, like, it's my choice and it's like, what's the alternative? Am I just going to choose not to, you know, because I don't want that, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a way of understanding like choice as youth athletes or youth in general, you see a Kit Kat bar and a Snickers and you have a choice. It's kind of like, you know, we all have a choice. And so it's like, which one are you going to go with and then stick with that path? Usually it should be the positive one, obviously. Um, yeah. This was so that good. Time. I'm like into this topic. <laughs> but yeah, this is great. And I think, you know, 
obviously we just went to town and started chit chatting about this, but I know that a lot of people will have questions on this. And if you have any like final closing thoughts about where to find you, or if anybody has any questions for you personally on your journey and your previous experiences, where can they find you? And yeah, how can they find you? Uh, I have, I have an athlete page on Facebook. I keep my, um, my personal Facebook private with family, but I have an athlete page that I try and answer all the questions. You can send me direct messages through Instagram. Um, all my handles are just Bria Larson. It looks like Brija. Uh, blame my parents. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, all, all my handles through all social media is just Bria Larson. Um, and I, I love trying to help, especially if it's just like, like just any questions in general, because it, it only, and it might take like 10 seconds of my time and can help someone else. That's awesome. In a bigger decision. Yeah. And that's great. And we'll definitely have you back on. And you're also very present yeah. on our Rise accounts and everything as well, mm -hmm. social media wise. So thank you so much. And this was really helpful, again, changing and shifting perspectives. So thank you so much. Of course. Thanks, Caroline. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>